and welcome to uh, episode 7 of Learning Photography. Uh, finally, we're getting our camera in our hand and we're going to start taking some pictures and talking about uh, just how we make decisions on what shutter speed, what aperture, what ISO to use. So the, the exposure triangle I talked about in episode 4. Uh, I hope you've watched episode 4, 5, and 6, uh, or at least 4 and possibly 5 because it gives you a good foundation for what those three elements of uh, taking a picture are. And hopefully you've kind of comprehended that and you're feeling comfortable with how they affect the outcome of your pictures. Uh, I just want to make a couple of preliminary comments before you actually start following me around and taking pictures, and that is that uh, I'm going to be referring very often and or I'm going to be directing myself and therefore you when you do the exercise to um, look in your viewfinder and make changes on your shutter speed or aperture or whatever uh, setting that you have. Um, and I want you to be aware of exactly what I'm referring to. So I'll put an image up here uh, of a kind of a standard uh, viewfinder view or display. So as, as you look in your through your viewfinder, you're going to see several numbers at the bottom. Uh, and of course, the scene before your camera at the top. And I want to point out what those numbers represent because they're good feedback to you as to how your camera is currently set. On the far left, typically the first number is the shutter speed that your camera is currently set at. So if it's 125, it means it's 125th of a second. If it's 30, it means it's 130th of a second. And then the next number is the f-stop or the aperture value. So it might be 5.6, which is f5.6, or an 8, f8. Uh, and then there are a series of vertical lines, and we'll come right back to that. On the right of those vertical lines, there may be two numbers, there may be only one number. So one of those numbers represents the ISO that your camera is set at, 200, 400 in the case of what we're doing today. Um, and then the next number is probably what number the next image is in the sequence of taking images or how many images you already have taken on this particular memory card. So let's come back to the middle of that uh, display, those vertical lines. I call that the metering index. And uh, it's important to us when we're working in manual mode so that we can see if we're overexposed or underexposed. The metering index consists of a series of vertical bars along the bottom of the viewfinder. And uh, it, right in the middle, there will usually be a zero. There might just be a longer vertical line. Um, and this tells us if something is overexposed or over, uh, underexposed, if our settings are underexposed or overexposed. And typical t typically, uh, to the right, you'll see a plus sign at the end of the, bar, the vertical bar. And to the left, you'll see a minus sign. This is typical of most cameras, but Nikon, for some reason, switches them around. And the minus is on the right and plus sign is on the left. So I won't refer to left and right. I'll say uh, that we're going to go towards the plus sign. And by going towards the plus sign, that means that we're, the camera thinks we're overexposing the image. And likewise, or conversely, if we go towards the minus sign, it thinks we're underexposing the image. So I'll, I'll say that you need to move your the indicator, which is that little arrow at the bottom, and it's not necessarily an arrow, that moves across to show you where the camera thinks the exposure is currently set. So this is a valuable tool, valuable visual feedback to you in the viewfinder, and a good reason for using it. In, even with this, the, the setup I have right here with the camera doing a video of me, you can see I, I should be fairly well exposed. And behind me, even though it's a little dark to me, it's a little overexposed. Uh, but in order to get myself exposed properly, I had to overexpose what the camera thought was correct. So we'll be doing that a lot. And I'm not doing these, these exercises randomly. I have a plan, uh, a, set, a set of steps that I go through for each of the episodes. And I'll make those steps available in a PDF that you can download. I'll have a link in the description so that you can do that. Uh, and then you can redo these uh, activities or exercises on your own with your own camera. Okay? All of these numbers and, and controlling the different dials and so on is a lot like learning how to drive a car. When you were, uh, when you, whether you were 16 or you were older when you actually learned how to drive a car, you we're overwhelmed by all the things you had to keep track of. You got to look behind you, make sure nobody's back there. If you're backing up, you've got to make sure that your seatbelt's buckled. You got to make sure that you've turned the car on. And, and uh, in the old days, you had to make sure you had your foot in the clutch. Um, 
But it, so there are a lot of things to remember. Then you drive out into traffic and there's all this stuff happening and you gotta be careful and so on. And you're just, you're scared. And you may be feeling that way right now with uh, your camera, but you don't need to, you don't need to. Uh, because remember after a year, probably even, certainly after a couple of years, it was just second nature. You just drove, you got in the car, you turned, the, you uh, started it up, looked around, make sure everything was safe, make sure your seatbelt was buckled, take off. Uh, and it just was a natural thing to do. And the same thing will happen with your camera in, if you choose to use this manual mode and have complete control, or even if you use one of the semi-automatic mo automatic modes, something like shutter priority or aperture priority, you'll get used to it. And you'll, you'll, it'll be second nature to check these things. But it, it just seems a little overwhelming when you start. The key with any, as with anything, is practice. You gotta practice. If you don't practice, you do this, you know, you'd follow these exercises for a while, maybe then you put your camera away and you don't do it for another month. You're not gonna learn, or it's not gonna become automatic to you, just like with driving a car. So, let's get to it and take some pictures. All right, we're gonna go back here. I, I'm in a local park. I had to give up on my backyard because of all the noise from the street behind. Uh, although we may have a train go by here because there's a train right down by James River and uh, I don't think we'll be able to hear it, but we might. So uh, I'm outside. There is sunlight and we're having again another glorious day for February in, in uh, Virginia, the east coast of the United States, North America. Uh, so there's sun coming through the trees. There's uh, bright areas over there and there's shade. And, and you can see that uh, it seems very shady right here and then there's some sun right there. So what I want you to do is take your camera, turn it on obviously, and uh, Take the lens cap off. Always remember to do that. Nice thing with digital camera, you can't see anything if the lens cap's on, right? Um, and put it in the P position of your mode dial. That's the program mode. And we're, program is kind of like auto. Auto, uh, but with, with the ability to override. When you put your camera on the green auto button or uh, position, you can't change anything much. Uh, you can't change anything, really. But on P, it's automatic. The camera's deciding what shutter speed and aperture to use based on the ISO you've chosen, and we're gonna do that. Um, but you can override. So if, if it chooses a particular shutter speed and you know that's too slow, you can make that shutter speed faster and the camera in turn will adjust the aperture to make sure the light is balanced to get a quote unquote correct image, a, perfect, a correctly exposed image for the quantity of light that the meter in your camera sees. So we're using P just really is to set a baseline to see what your camera thinks the correct exposure would be. So I've got my camera on P I've got my ISO set, uh, because it's bright over there, I'm going to choose 200. That's my base ISO on my camera. If yours is 100, put it on 100. Otherwise, just put it at 200. Uh, if it's shady where you're taking your pictures, if I were taking pictures here by this column, then I would put it at 400. But I've got mine at 200. And I'm going to point towards the uh, wall. Uh, and down in the dark area of the wall, and it's telling me that I, the correct exposure is 120, 250th of a second at f5.6. So I'm going to take the picture, and there it is. Now to me, the top, these, these white rocks that are embedded in, the, in this wall are overexposed. So we're not going to worry about that right now, because the purpose of this exercise today is to see, to show you how you can change your shutter speed to make an image brighter or light or darker, how you can change your aperture to make an image lighter or darker. So we're not really out here to take the, the picture of, the, of a lifetime, but rather to get the idea of how we can control that exposure. So go to your, uh, press on your review button, wherever that is, and uh, look at the image you just took a picture of. Now there may be no, Im no information about the image displayed, so do whatever button you need to do on your camera. On mine, it's the info button. It might be a display button. It might be on the Nikon, for example, we press the up, the 12 o'clock position on that dial, and until you're able to see what the shutter speed was and what the aperture was that your camera uh, used to take that picture. In my case, I've got uh, 1 250th of a second and 5.6 as an aperture. So I'll get out of there and now change your dial to M for manual. Remember those numbers and let's change our aperture to 5.6 and I'm going to change my shutter speed to 1 over 250. 
and I'm going to take that same picture and then I'm going to uh, get my dis I'm going to go to review and I'm going to change the display so I can see the picture and I'm going to look at the picture before it which is the one I took with program mode and they should look pretty much identical okay so now what I'm going to do I want, what I want you to do is I want you to change your shutter speed to make it faster. Remember what I said with uh, shutter speed, like say for example, one, uh, one 125th of a second is one shutter speed. A stop faster is double that, 250, uh, one 250th of a second. And so that's a stop. And most cameras by default have three clicks in between. Uh, that is to say that there are third increments. You can go uh, like F8 and then the next number up, and I don't remember these numbers. I, I know the F-stop numbers, but I don't remember those numbers, nor do you have to. Um, an F8 and then click once, click twice, click three times, and it goes to F11. Shutter speed, same way. If it's 125th of a se second, one click, Two clicks, three clicks is going to be 250. If your camera's not doing that, then yours is set to half increments. But we want to make sure, and that's a menu item. So check in your manual to find out how you fix that. We want it to be in third increments. So I'm going to go put, get my display here. I'm at 1 250th of a second. So if I go 1, 2, 3 to the right, because I'm removing or I'm reducing the amount of time that the shutter, speed, shutter is open. So I'm increasing the speed by going to the right. Basic, think of R, removing light. Okay, now I'm at 1 500th of a second. I'm not going to change the aperture. Uh, I just want to see if by changing that shutter speed, I changed the outcome of my picture. Now the light may have changed between the time, if you're in an area where the light, the sun's going behind clouds and stuff, that can affect what your uh, picture will look like. And I take the picture and I look at it. I go to the review button, go back. And sure enough, it's darker. That's what I expected, because I made the shutter speed faster. Um, so let's go back to where we were. So that's gonna be three clicks to the left. One, two, three. You go to the left for light. Left to add more light. Uh, I gotta give Rod Deutschman credit for that uh, little tip to use um, uh, the left and right for letting in more light and are removing light. Uh, okay, so I am at, or I'm back at 250. Now I want to go to the left three more clicks. One, two, three. I'm going to slow down the shutter speed by half. So it's one over 1 25th of a second. So what do you think is going to happen now? Right, it's going to get lighter, we hope. Um, so I take the picture, and sure enough, it's overexposed. Now the rocks are overexposed at the top as well as the rocks below. So I have by changing the shutter speed and not ch touching the aperture, because remember I'm in, I'm in manual mode and I only change one thing at a time, uh, or independent, I change things independent of each other. So at 1 25th of a second, I've got a, a brighter image. Is that what happened to yours? Check and see. Okay, so I'm going to put my shutter speed back to 250, which is what, remember in the program mode, that's what the camera thought was the right exposure uh, for shutter speed, the right setting for shutter speed. And now we're going to change our aperture. Same principle, but you need to use, you know, on my camera, I have two, two buttons. The front button changes aperture. If your camera does that, then that's what you use. Otherwise, you may have to press another button, that little plus minus or AV button, in conjunction with turning the dial on your camera, whether your dial's on top or in the back or in the front. Um, so, I'm going to change my aperture. I want to make it uh, small. I want to make it smaller. So I'm going to go to the right to remove light. So I'm going to go one, two, three. It was 5.6. The next full stop is eight, f8. Okay. So I'm going to take a picture, and it's bright, a lot brighter than the original one. Okay, so now I'm going to take, I want to take my aperture back to where we started at 5.6. So it's three clicks to the left. One, two, three, 5.6. Confirm that that's right on your camera too. And then I'm going to go three to the left, more, three clicks more to the left. One, two, three. So I went from 5.6 to F4. And that 
means that I've doubled the size of the opening in the lens and therefore I'm allowing twice as much light in. So we would expect it to be bright. So I click on it and sure enough, it's bright and the top, the rocks on top are way overexposed. So that's how we can uh, make an image brighter or lighter if we need to override what the camera thinks is correct. Now notice another thing when you do that, for example, right now I have it at 1 over 250 at f4. On my camera, when I look through the viewfinder, that metering index is showing me that um, I am one stop overexposed so that it's going towards the plus sign. The little index is going towards the plus sign. Or maybe you don't have an indicator, but you rather the, the, the little blocks fill in. So you may not have vertical lines, you may have little boxes, uh, however your camera displays that. So that's how we control light, lightness and darkness in an image. Now, let's go on to episode eight and try something else. <laughs>